my name is Ashley. I am a homeschooling mama to a toddler and a kindergartner, and today I'm sharing how you can homeschool with little to no space. Yes, it's possible. I have lived in teeny tiny spaces my entire motherhood and am currently in a temporary living situation where there is very little space for me to teach my kids. I will show you my setup, which includes my trusty homeschool cart, and I'm going to offer tips throughout the video that will help you manage homeschooling in a small space. Whether you have 400 square feet or 4,000 square feet, your child will have everything they need to learn. So let's get into it. Here it is, this little piece of metal that contains almost everything I need to homeschool my kindergartner and toddler. I purchased this homeschool cart from Target and it has been a sanity saver in terms of keeping everything organized. You can buy these almost anywhere. I'm sure you've seen them at Ikea and Amazon as well, and they come in different colors. I'm going to start from the top and make my way down. Here on the left side of the top rack is where all of my kindergartners and toddlers curriculum live. And this is where tip number one comes in. For all books and paper and curriculum, stand them up. Do not stack them horizontally. I don't know if you have experienced this, but there comes a small frustration with trying to find a certain color paper or a certain book when they are stacked up. Not to mention it takes up more space versus if you stand them up. I purchased these very inexpensive cardboard book holders at Ikea. They were 59 cents for two. They are not meant to last, but they are perfect for a temporary fix, and they do a great job keeping all of my kids' curriculum in an upright position. And speaking of curriculum, tip number two is to use exactly what you need. It is very easy to get trapped in that surplus mentality when it comes to getting educational materials. I'm guilty of this, and I'm not proud of it. But I have come to learn that I do not need a lot of things, a lot of books, a lot of curriculum, to teach my kids. So I stick to the basic workbooks that work for us. I made a video last week going into detail on what first grade curriculum I'm using if you're interested. But basically I just have a few multi-subject workbooks, some single subject workbooks that we use every week for homeschooling, some worksheets I have printed, my toddler's workbooks for when he starts preschool, some plain white paper for drawing as well as construction paper that needs to be replenished, my kindergartner's journal and science journal, and a handful of her Bob books. Tip number three is to store away all of the extra materials. That way you leave room on your cart or your shelf for things that you use on a regular basis. For example, I have two sets of Bob books, but if I put all the books on my homeschool cart, it would take up a lot of room for no reason. So I separate a small stack that she is currently reading to stay on the cart, and then I store the other books away in an accessible place I can get to so I can rotate them out. Moving on to the right side is a basket full of math manipulatives. You can see here behind the basket I put her magnetic 10 frame as well as her abacus. And in the basket is where all of her smaller manipulatives are, mostly separated into bags. And this is where tip number four comes in bags. Move your resources out of their packages and boxes and put them in bags or pouches like these. It saves a ton of room and is the reason why I can fit all of my daughter's math manipulatives into one small basket. Of course, I have a video linked below that describes each manipulative in detail and how I use them if you're curious. And I don't haphazardly throw her manipulatives into random bags, I do organize them the best I can so I know where to find each thing quickly. So that's the top shelf, curriculum, paper for crafts and coloring, and math manipulatives. Moving down to the middle shelf is where I keep all of the art supplies. Here we keep markers pens and pencils, though there are no pencils in here currently, a variety of dry erase markers, scissors and a hole punch, and glue. In this bag are colored pencils, and this large bag on the side is filled with crayons. These are in a bag because she often travels around the house with them to do different projects. The other supplies are kept in these clear desk organizers that come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. They are also portable if she needs to take them into another room. Tip number five is to be minimal with art supplies. Just stick to two or three mediums like crayons, markers, and colored pencils. Those are the most commonly used in elementary. And one pair of scissors and one glue per child should be enough. Going minimal on things like art supplies is essential for limited space and budget. Remember, it can always change as circumstances change. Moving down to the bottom shelf is where I keep a small variety of homeschooling resources I use for both of my children. The first basket is dedicated to my toddler's touch and feel flashcards. These are one of my favorite teaching tools I use for him because they have bright and realistic pictures that are engaging and each card has a touch and feel section that appeals to tactile learning. 
Each set is different, from animals to transportation to colors and shapes. I love using these cards to enhance my toddler's language development by building his vocabulary. The next basket over is dedicated to my kindergartner's language arts. I have blank mini books in different colors that she uses for creative writing. Some letter flashcards, state flashcards, culture flashcards, a bag of magnetic letters that we love because they stick to our whiteboard. Then the last bag has different word games like her sight word flashcards, her O snap sticks, and card games I created from her Alphaphonics book. And that's the homeschool cart. If you notice to the side is three baskets full of books. We do not have a bookshelf yet, so this is where they live for now. The first basket has my five-year-old's books like her Bible, some chapter books, uh, ready-to-read books, KiwiCo books, her highlights magazines, and it looks like some Easter books I need to put away. The next basket is my son's board books, his little ABC and 123 books, and a few others. Then the third basket holds all of our library books. Which brings me to tip number six, use your library. When there is not a lot of room to hold a lot of books, the library is a great resource to discover new books, see what ones your little ones like or dislike. Because personally, I have wasted money on books that my children didn't even touch, which was a bummer, but lesson learned. As you can see, I rented a lot of butterfly books for our butterfly unit study. That video will be going up in a few weeks, so subscribe so you don't miss it. On the other side of the homeschool cart lies our beloved whiteboard. We get so much use out of this. As of now, it's sitting on the floor because I don't want to put holes in the wall since it's a temporary space. But my tip number seven is to utilize your vertical space. Like I said, I can't really do this right now in my temporary situation, but you know darn well I will be using up all that wall space when I settle into my new home. There is only so much floor space. Using that wall space, that is prime real estate for all the things when, when, <laughs> when space is tight. And there it is. This is how we homeschool in a small space, and I hope it's encouraged you if you find yourself in a similar situation. Don't get me wrong, homeschool rooms are great. I actually love watching YouTube videos about them. They get me really excited, but that's not my reality right now in this season of life, and that's okay. And I hope you can find contentment in whatever living slash homeschooling situation you are in right now. Learning takes place in those beautiful minds of your children, not in a room, and you are doing a great job teaching them what they need. If you find value in this kind of content, please hit that like button and subscribe to see all the great things coming up. Happy learning, I will see you in the next one.